folks, and welcome to another Flycast Partners presentation. I'll be your host, Rich Longo, and I'm being joined today by none other than Tom Scheel. Now, Tom Scheel is one of our consultants, senior consultants here at Flycast Partners, and he's going to talk about is your tool solving these issues. Now, he's been one of our senior consultants for a number of years and has been implementing IT service management software as well as configuring the software using customer requirements to design incident management, problem management, change management processes, in addition to other ITIL processes and data integrations that that organization may need to utilize. Before we get started, Tom, let me introduce our organization. Flycast Partners is here to deliver a seriously amazing IT experience. Founded and staffed by personnel who have many years of experience in the IT space, we took the best ideas from all these collective experiences and added the best components necessary to grow and become a leading value-added reseller in the North American IT market. We offer best-in-class implementation services and training in IT service management, IT asset management, IT operations management, and workload automation spaces using ITIL best practice. Our professional services team can easily scale up or down to meet the IT needs of any customer, regardless of your size, complexity, or budgetary restrictions. We offer implementation services both on-site and remote, as well as training to reinforce your company's long-term IT success. Our ongoing remote administration support service offerings will enable your organization to focus on those normal day-to-day -day operations, saving you both precious time and money. I encourage you to reach out to us directly at 844-FLYCAST. That's 844-359-2278. Now, our website has many different things that you can utilize to research different technologies that we offer here at Flycast Partners. You can even go down and chat with one of our IT experts Monday through Friday. They'll be happy to talk to you during normal business hours and help you out. You can view any upcoming webinars that Flycast Partners has coming up and share those with your coworkers. So without further delay, I'm going to turn this over to the, our star of the hour, Mr. Thomas Scheel. Tom, you have control. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Rich. Let me go ahead and uh, get this sharing here. It looks good. <clears throat> Wonderful. So yes, as Rich said, my name is Tom Scheel or Thomas Scheel. Um, I am a, consult a senior consultant here at Flycast Partners. And the tool that we're going to be talking about today is um, actually ShareWell. And as Rich said, we've used this for incident management, problem management, but it goes beyond just that realm. And, and, we'll, and we'll show you why. But I don't want you to just get focused on those processes um, more as to what I'm showing you. And it doesn't just apply to those. Um, so what we're talking today is about one steps and expressions within ShareWell. And we really want to see is your current tool solving the issue, solving some issues that you might be running into that one steps and expressions help with. So <clears throat> let's go through all that right there. So I am a senior ITSM consultant. I, I have had about six years experience straight out of college. Um, and that is key to this because you'll see I came in very inexperienced. Um, and and Sharewell just just took off, and I was able to pick it up even though I was inexperienced. I was a presenter at the Sharewell Global Conference in 2017, where I showed the benefits of some of these in a very complex onboarding process with a customer that we developed it for. I am also a Sharewell certified instructor, so I know most of my stuff about Sharewell. Key thing is, it's all been self-taught, and that goes to show you what we're going to talk about today. So with your current tools, are you able to actually provide functionality for almost anything that your organization requires? Or do you have limitations? Do you find yourself developing your processes around what the tool can do? When in reality, it should be vice versa. Get a tool that can conform to your processes or develop for your processes. Do those tools provide data editors in order to change, modify, transform um, data going in into something else to give you what you need for your processes? <clears throat> and all of this while not requiring any real hard 
knowledge about coding. You know, you don't need to know JavaScript or CSS when a lot of tools you sometimes do. This is what Sherwell has the power to do through one steps and expressions. As I said, I came into this as a college intern. I was not, I would, my, my degree is in data management. I hold a, ba a bachelor's in data management. So I'm a, I'm a database guy. I don't know how to program in C sharp in Java, anything like that. But through one steps and expressions, I am able to accomplish the exact same things without that knowledge because Sherwell does it all through user interface for me. And we'll go to show you some of those. <clears throat> one steps are essentially it's, it's a group of functions which can be used within each other. You can nest them within each other. So a one step can perform some actions and then run a whole nother one step if we need. Um, and they're just used to provide a series of actions or, or workflow commands, anything, any set of instructions to get from point A to point B. Here's some of our common actions, for example, and, and some of these would hopefully be familiar. So launching a URL, so go to a web page, doing a print function, um, sending an email, showing a pop-up is just a pop-up appears on the screen with some information on it. These are all very general use. They're, they're, no, they're not about one item in particular, and some of them, like I said here, is very common, sending an email. We send emails all the time print we do that all the time going to web pages pretty common some of them are for advanced use so running a program it would be something like execute a powershell script okay um writing to files you know if you want to write to a batch file some of those are very advanced in their use but as you'll come to see even the advanced options require very don't don't require actually deep, deep knowledge, it's there to guide you. <coughs> oh, pardon me. Now, these set of actions, business object actions, these are a little bit more specified. This is when I'm looking at an incident record. These are usually related to that incident record I have open. So we have uh, something like create a new business object. That's a very commonly used one. Creating a new child business object. So a related object to an incident, like from an incident, I want to create a task or a journal entry. Deleting a business object, that's pretty self-explanatory. Going to a record allows me to go to any record in the system that I have access to by putting in a specific identifier. And I'll, I'll show you some of these here in just a minute, but I just want to go through and, and give you an idea of some of them. Link and unlink business objects allows us to relate to items. So I can take a task from one incident and put it onto a different one if I wanted. And that's actually under the transfer related, but I could perform that same function under link or unlink if, if I, you know, know how to do it if I if I pick the right unique identifiers. We can step through children, transfer attachments, update a business object, which is incredibly common. And working with the queue is not as common. Transfer attachments and working with the queue are two of our not as common items here. Now I'm going to take a moment and I want to show you what this looks like. Oops. I need to go back here and show you what this looks like within the system itself. <coughs> Pardon me, we got a little bit of a cold going on. So within our one steps, we, can, we have a one step manager. And any of these are one steps. These are all actions that do various items, like assign to a team. I can edit this one step and see it's just a series of actions. So this, if we notice our little green pencil sign, we can line that up with the icon over here. It's update a business object, one of our very common ones. And we see we have our fields here. So we can go down to what field we want to set and set it up with a, in this case, it's a prompt. This is one we'll come across here very soon, is a decision tree. I'm going to go ahead and 
let's just go to this area first and show you some of these ones that we've already talked about. Launching a URL. There you go. I just tell it what URL I want to go to. If this URL is stored within a record somewhere, <coughs> excuse me, I can just put it in here. If I wanted to print, I just click and drag. That's all I'm doing is I click and drag on here and I'm telling it what I'm filling out the information like for printing, what, where do I want to print to and what are the contents of that. I'm deleting these just by going to right clicking them. I have, this is the PowerShell one I told you about. I just fill in some of, you know, where, what file name do I start in? Here's some of the command line arguments. This is, this is used for advanced actions, but you can Google these arguments and just copy and paste them straight into here. <clears throat> Sending an email is literally as simple as adding this. We put in who the email is to, where we're going to, what email account we're going to send it from, our subject line, our body. Okay. Um, create a business object. Once again, click and drag. I set my fields. So as you see, it's very, very simple and very intuitive as to what do I do when I get here. I see this and I'm just going to, I see a list of fields. I know I'm just going to go set them. Let me go back to our slideshow and show you some more of these that we have available. Except for I got ahead of myself because I accidentally clicked a number of times. That's what we want. So these are some of our more com more advanced actions. Um, I, I use the word complex a lot. Um, they're not necessarily complex. It's just understanding what you're doing. These have um, these ones right here have a more general use to them, but they are <clears throat> excuse me. They're still more specified in actions than some of our common actions. They're still working with this record, but it allows me to multitask into other records and do a lot of other stuff at the same time. These are going to be more on the advanced edge, but once again, I can show you, even though it's advanced, you don't need to necessarily know a whole lot of coding. And in some cases, you still don't need to know any. Calling a web service, that's how we're going to make some of our REST calls or our SOAP API calls. Decide between multiple cases is a decision tree. So it starts at the top and says, if this condition is true, do this. If not, do this. And this allows you to create those advanced workflows and branch them off into multiple areas. One of the great things about one steps is you have all of these actions, you have nothing saying an order that they have to go in. You put you can put them in whatever order, any any one, one step action can come after any other one step action as long as it works with the flow. Um, Excel merge is very, very rare. I've, I'm not sure if I've ever actually seen that used. Executing a command allows you to do stuff like save, refresh, go to a dashboard, for instance. You have your go to field, go to actions. And here's where I showed you even there's an action for running another one step. So I can nest one steps inside other one steps. Step through a collection. This is used in our when we build stuff like JSON or XML collections. And it allows for actual faster processing than a database actually would. So these can be used to help speed up the process in certain cases. And then update a variable or stored value. These are temporary values or semi-permanent values that can be set once and then referenced later. <clears throat> All right, so we'll go ahead and get back out of that and go back to here. Let me show you some of those real quick. All right, so we have our call a web service. And I know I know a lot of people have seen SOAP and AP, REST API calls, and they're very complex. In here, all you have to do is set up the SOAP or REST, <coughs> excuse me, set up their method, set up the authentication and the URL right in here. And then once you configure it, you actually call that method through this list right here. And then it would have some parameters. And you fill it out the same way you would have filled out any of these by 
you know, coming in here, you can right click and select a value, you can type it in, or you can build expression. So it does the same thing here. And this is how you would build out your soap calls or even rest. This is that decision tree that I told you about. So we can add multiple levels to this and then even nest them within each other. Very easy to follow the bouncing ball here. And all we do is we configure our expression right here to say, if this, do this. If the assigned to is Bob, oh, you know, whatever. The execute a command functionality, like I said, this allows you to choose commands. So you don't, you know, you can tell it to save, refresh, anything that is in our file menus typically can be accessed through here. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Um, then we have, like I said, you have an option to run another one step. So if in this part in the tree, I need to go ahead and assign it to a team, I can do that. When we talk about not needing to know code, one of the biggest, excuse me, I am sorry. Uh, one of the biggest things that I found was that I got into here and I said, I don't know XML. I Googled it five minutes later, I understood. I need to create an open tag. I need to create a close tag. And then I have stuff in the middle. Uh, this would be item name equals one and code equals one a. That is the extent of what I need to know about XML. <clears throat> and then I can actually, using my stored values, build it out. It doesn't take an advanced structure knowledge. So even if there's advanced stuff in here, five minutes of Googling and you're on your way. Um, and then we will show, like I said, the update variable or stored values. You have your semi-permanent stored values and your variables, which are temporary used right here. That is a very quick run through because we have a lot of items here we're gonna go into more detail with these later, and we can act, we're can we actually gonna put out webinars about using each one of these individually and go into a lot more detail so you can see, but this is just an overview to show you the vast variety of tools at your disposal. Using these, you can combine them in different ways, call a web service and then create a business object off of the information from that API call or go to this record and perform these actions and then jump to this one and do this. It's incredibly flexible. I would say 95 to 98% of everything that I've ever been asked to do in Sharewell has been doable simply because of this. And I've been asked to do a lot of stuff. One of the things you'll notice that I talked about were expressions. And that's kind of the second half of this capability. An expression takes and manipulates data or is used to, to perform a variety of actions based on that. So you have different types of expressions that, that they take individual pieces of data and either do a comparison off of them or you can manipulate them, you can do math off of them, <clears throat> pardon me, anything like that. So. For instance, if I wanted to run this step, if the status of the ticket equals new, that is an expression. This is what is called a logical expression, and we have various types of those. Expressions are used not only within one step, but other areas of shareable to set visibility, uh, control conditions, even limit access to records very simply without needing to know any deep coding. You have a value, an operator, 
and then a comparison value. And let me show you some of those now. These are all of our different types of expressions. We have aggregates, and you can see we'll, we'll work down our list here. The first one we come to is aggregates. This performs a calculation against relationships. So if I have an incident and some tasks, I could say, show me the total number of tasks that are closed, that have a status equal to closed. Or if I have a time to completion field that says this task took me one hour to close, I can actually do an aggregate and say, show me how long it took all of the tasks against this ticket total to close by doing an aggregate of their uh, time to completion field, or in this case, the example I give you is a quantity field. You know, I have five different products against a um, purchase request. I wanna know how many products are on that purchase request in total. I do an aggregate of the quantity field. <clears throat> a case statement ju is just like our decision tree on the one step, except for it's for expressions. It does an if then else to say expression one, if that's not true, go to expression two, until finally you get to the bottom and it is it has a default setting that says, if everything else fails, do this. And counter values, I do want to show you those. Oh, hello, Windows. Now get out of that. Thank you. So I'm just going to go in here real quick to show you what a counter value is. A counter value is essentially a stored number that increments every time it is called. So this is how you would get your ticket numbers. Knowledge article one, knowledge article two, knowledge article, in this case, three, four, five, six. And we set how much it increments by. And so when we add this counter expression, all it does is it tells us it's gonna pull that next number in the list. Next is date time. So this is how we can do math saying, I want to find out what is one week from today, or I want to find out what is X number of minutes from an X starting time or days or months or years. Um, so if we have, let's say an SLA that says this has to be closed in three hours, we can use this date time to say, what is three hours from the date that it, this was created, that this ticket was created? Duration between two date time values. Find out how long it was in minutes from when the ticket was open to when it was closed. This is, this is all very intuitive user interface that Sharewell provides that is just flexible and used for so many purposes. And it really just, it's it's only based off your imagination. If you can figure out how to combine it, they provide the tools to get you to, to get you able to combine it. The logical comparison, as we showed, is based off true or false. If incident.status equals new, return true. If it doesn't, return false. And then a number expression is just, I'll show you that one real quick. This allows us to do math very easily. I can do 15 plus, you know, the incident, uh, I think there's a total open tasks field in here. Just gotta remember where it's at, total tasks. So I want to add 15 to the total number of tasks here divided by, you know, whatever. And this is would perform the mathematical operation on here. 
can put out a, a number that I can put into a field. Oops. There we go. A text is, is really just the text version. You, you say, I want to put in this specific word, or maybe I want to insert the name of the person who is the owner of the ticket. It allows you to do it dynamically without hard coding in some one person's name. <coughs> Excuse me. And then finally is user or customer data. Once again, we'll put out another webinar to show you each one of these individually because each one is a can of worms in and of its own and how you use them really helps you grow. It really helps you get into fine tuning your processes and getting the exact pieces of data that you need. This user customer data one is gathering up pieces of information about whoever is, you know, the current customer of the ticket or the current logged in user of ShareWell, or even calling back that value of a particular person that may have nothing to do with this record, um, you know, the owner of the company or something. Um, you can also pull back their emails, who their manager is, lots of different information. <clears throat> Within each of these, whenever I create an expression, I can also select a modifier on it. These modifiers will change depending on the type of expression I'm using, but they allow me to do even more. I can set it to a currency, format it as currency, and then grab the left five characters and, and just keep going. And then I can parse out text between two words. This modifier just adds to the capabilities of the expression itself. I want to pull back the owner of the ticket, but I only want their last name. I can do that using a modifier. So instead of getting Thomas Scheel, I would just get Scheel. Or um, the email address, I just want to pull back the domain at the end and maybe not the full one because I need it for something. That's how those modifiers are going to work. When I do something like an Excel, I'm sorry, not an Excel, my apologies, an XML, I want to create an XML variable real quick. This is that advanced functionality that I told you about. If I can type and not mix up my X and my C's, I'll create an XML collection type variable. Call it begin XML type name equals one. Just close this real quick. Now, if I were to step or let's say update another variable uh, after stepping through that collection. So now I can use my step through collection to say, I have an XML collection out here, but I'm gonna call list. And then for each list that I have in that XML collection, which can be built dynamically, I want to update a business object. Those modifiers really come into handy because now I have a list variable which is an, represents the, the, the current XML item I'm on and my modifiers allow me to simply grab <clears throat> that attribute that I created called name or type or whatever I might have entered into it, I can grab that value, which I think was one, and put it right into here. I did all of that without really knowing a whole lot about XML other than how to create a base layout, which I can Google in five minutes. And this goes back to really the main point about what can your tool do? What can your current tool do? Does it have the ability to have somebody come in who is fresh out of college with no coding experience and develop completely complex processes. ShareWell does. 
even the advanced function, you only need to know basic information that anybody could do. So ultimately, can your tool do that? Thank you very much for your time. That is what I had to show you. Please look forward to any of our other webinars where we will be getting into each one of these in detail because there's just there's a whole world open to you once you start to see how to put these together. And um, Rich, I to yeah, Tom, I want to thank you for that presentation. You know, I've been looking at uh, this tool for years now, and I've seen many things, but you pointed out a couple things I hadn't seen yet. So this is this is even uh, informational for me. So I definitely appreciate it, and thank you for your time today. You're very welcome, Rich. I appreciate you giving us uh, the opportunity to show a couple things. Excellent. Well, you know, folks. If there are any questions at all about the ShareWell tool, or you'd like to have a demonstration, or you're, you're thinking about it, but you're just not quite sure if your environment's ready for it or would fit for it, uh, please give us a call. We'd be happy to help you through it. Uh, you can also chat with us live on our, uh, our website with our IT experts. They'd be more than happy to talk to you. Email us at info at flycastpartners.com. We're here to help. Uh, with all everything going on today, I know that uh, everybody has a lot of stresses that they're dealing with, and we want to be that organization that helps you get through it to help relieve some of the stresses that your department may be experiencing at the moment. So with that being said, I'm going to thank everybody for taking time out of their very busy day to join us for this presentation, as well as you, uh, Tom. I really appreciate it. And uh, until our next presentation. <laughs>